Hi folks, welcome back. All right, we have one last half blind to cut that's in the back end. So I want to do that right away. I want to see if we can get assembling soon. Okay, I'm going to put that, double check on the numbers. That's number three on the outside, that's number three on the outside. Set this in the vise. Depth flush at the top of the plane. I also, uh, you saw me use a white handled saw on the last one. Switch back to my black handled saw, which, as I mentioned to you earlier, has got a little less set on it. So, cutting dovetails in thin wood, I like it better. Okay, take this, push that back, set this over. I need my lamp. Now, I'm going to line up that. Jake, get that thing to work for me. I think it needs to plugs bad. There it is. Okay, line up the bottom so that the grooves will line up when I cut them. Got to get the, uh, the surface right there on the half blind. It has to be lined up perfectly with the inside face of the pin board. Okay, double check that. When you do this, you want to look. You want to look right down that inside line. If you look back back here, it looks like a gap. But then, as you move over top, the gap obviously disappears, and that's the one you've got to judge it from. Oh, by the way, a friend of mine down in Greenville, I'll call him. His name is Ed. He took a class with me last year. Excellent craftsman, machinist by trade, and he emailed me, um, offered a solution for being able to cut the rabbit that we normally cut to line up the dovetail, and it was a great idea, so I'm actually going to demonstrate it. If I get to it today, I will. If not, we'll do it quite soon, but appreciate it. Thanks for the input, and uh, it makes this whole process so much easier having all of you guys participating that way, so if you have an idea, please send it forward and let us experiment with it. Okay, bring the knife in, bend it up against the side, drag it through the end grain, not too much pressure. Make sure you stop before you cross that end lap so we're not trying to get rid of those heavy marks or worse, stuck with them. By the way, the blade, the new blades, the final, I think the final blades came for the marking knife today, so we should have that ready for sale in a matter of a week or so. That's been the hold up, is trying to get it, the blades just perfect so that they'll, they'll go in there and do exactly what I want them to do, which is give an accurate mark without cutting into the side of the tail when you're doing it. And to this point, I can only do them by hand, but uh, IBC figured out a way to do them in a mechanized way, so that'll be an advantage for you. Okay, before I move, double check and make sure the lines are in the right spot. None of them varied or got away from where they should have been. Frick, can you see that? Get right up down here and look right down. Can you, I'll give you some more light. You see that? Now, by seeing that the lines are exactly where they need to be, meaning right where the tails touch the pins on the side, then I know I'm not going to have a problem as long as I cut to those lines. Okay, let me lift that away. Before we set it down, come in here and chamfer the inside edges. Remember, when we're doing a half blind, we can cut away the entire corner. When we're doing a through dovetail, you would come in and start in here about a sixteenth of an inch, but because otherwise you'd see you'd have little uh, triangular holes in the end of the joint, and then come in there and just clip those off. Now, somebody asked recently in an email why I didn't cut the grooves already and the reason is that if you cut the groove early if we were if we were to cut this groove you'll see that there's very little material right there which means let's assume that the groove goes down this deep when I come in and try to transfer that tail onto the pin this piece may very well break or it'll bow a little bit and I won't get a true mark so I leave that intact until all the dovetails are cut, then I'll come in and finish that groove. Now we had that one on there just so that we'd be able to get the proper registration point back here. Okay, that one's done. 
Now I take my dovetail marker, turn this around, lay it on its side. Frick, you want to come over my right shoulder? I've seen this before, but you may as well see it again. Come in here. Now when I do this, I want to try to get these marks lined up precisely with those scribe lines in the end grain. That new knife actually leaves a nice visible line. Sometimes dovetail marking knives can be so sharp that they leave a line that you can't see. And I don't, as I mentioned before, I don't want to come in and uh, highlight those with a pencil or chalk dust or anything. I want them as they are so that I know when I'm cutting I'm being precise as possible. Make sure this is standing plumb. There. Alright, so this is the dovetail saw that I just, I have, I have little to no set left on there. Purposely took it off. And when it comes to cutting small pieces, I just find it a little bit better. Doesn't give me as wide a kerf. Okay, line that up. Nice light touch. You want to go downstairs and tell him to turn that off? Okay, reposition. Highlight the top and the end. I don't know if you can see from that side or not, but I've got to uh, push a little extra hard in order to compensate for not being able to have my thumb right at the contact point. Okay, now we still have that mark on there. No, we don't. I'm gonna put a new one on. Grab my felt tip. Make sure this is good and sharp. Where are you? Set that up so that the end of the chisel is right there on the um, on the uh, gauge mark. Put that on there. Position the lamp. Remember, we always want to chop so that we can see plumb. Identify my waste. I'll just go hurry through this, but um, talk to you at the same time. Two thirds of the way down until we get in there. About a third of the distance between the end and the scribe line. Now we can start heading right to the bottom. Remember, if you take small, manageable bites, it doesn't take as much effort, and the chisel doesn't get stuck on you. Try to keep it plumb. Two thirds. Work your way in. Now I'll work toward getting to the bottom. Been a fair bit of talk lately about what kind of an angle you can grind on A2 chisels. And that the limitation with A2 between 01 is that you can't put as steep a grind on there. Well, that's a 17 degree bevel. Now it's got a couple of extra degrees on the primary and tertiary, but that edge holds up just fine in this wood. So, from practical experience, I can't agree with those who think that 01 is the solution for lower angles. In my book, Cryo-treated A2 is the toughest of the metals used in chisels. Set that 
right in the scribe line, right down to the line. Okay, now those fibers will just break out. If I need to, I'll grab a small chisel and just help them a bit. Oops. Ooh, look at that. Son of a gun. Wow, that's really close to the line. Shoot. Push that back in. Okay, hope that doesn't cause any problems. It looks like it might be right on the scribe line. I'll be particularly careful when I do that. Uh, that was my last one, and I know I, when I was doing it, I noticed that I went too deep. I went too deep too soon. You've got to get down in there at least a third of the distance before you start driving the chisel all the way to the bottom, or else you're going to run into those kind of problems. All right, excuse me. I'm going to put a backup block on this. Keep that nice and clean on the back side. I don't want to trap any debris between the two. End up with a big dent. Okay, I'm going to use a narrower chisel. I'm not going to tackle that one yet. I'm going to get my head ready for it. Just chop down, then expose the kerf. Remember, do not pry. Never pry against the side, any of the perimeter. Little tiny pieces are easier to remove than trying to do it in one big chunk. back to expose the kerf. I'm going to switch chisels before I set the chisel in that marking gauge line just so that I don't have to move it so many times. With a narrow chisel, it would be one, two, three, possibly four moves. And I can get better registration this way with a wider chisel. Now what I'm tempted to do is go in there and use a little bit of cyanacrylate glue. Bless you, Jake. A little cyanacrylate glue to hold those fibers in place, but it might be all right. I can hear the traditionalists now. Cyanacrylate glue. They never had cyanacrylate glue, but wouldn't they wish they did if they knew about it? That's what I liked about the shakers. They were forever inventing. Come up with a better way. I think we're going to be all right. That occurred right on the line. I got lucky. Don't bank on that every time. Frick, you never comment. Even when I almost screw up. I knew you'd fix it. Yeah, yeah. Looking for a raise. That's right. Keep looking. I'll set it in the arc and gauge line. Sometimes that thing's hard to find. Okay, I think I'll have to come in and clean some of this out with the quarter inch chisel just because I didn't get around to making a smaller dovetail chisel.
can't get in there yet. So let me try to move along there and sever those fibers with this chisel. Come in, reference off of the kerf, and just move the chisel forward. You know what? See the way that's starting to tear a little bit? I think I need to put a new edge on this. So let's get over here. Rather than risk it, we'll fix it. Just bring these back to being white. Let me know they're flat. Keep the lapping plate clean. This is my 1000. Set it down there. This is going to be need. need this is need, going to need to be reground soon. So in the next one or two episodes, we'll go through grinding on the bench grinder. Power tool, yes, I know. But I don't have a hand cranked and I don't see any merit in it. I think I can feel the burr. Find out in a minute. This is the 16,000. Flip it over. That black was the uh, ink mark. Okay, so I'll take a quick look at that edge. There's a little bit of deformation right there, but I th I'll try it and see how it is. I'll bring this up a little bit higher. This is the only part that's hard, is coming in there and trying to feel it. It's cutting better. You'll see how much cleaner that is. See that? That's better. Trying to come in and feel when the chisel is actually laying on the kerf. This would definitely be easier if I had a narrower dovetail chisel. So I could add that to the to do list. Same thing on this side. Come in, sever those fibers at the base. do this where you can go in there and clean those corners out with a skew chisel if you want but that's two chisels versus one as I mentioned also throws your line of force off which in pine doesn't make that big of a difference but you get into something tougher and it makes it a little harder all right now I should be able to come in there get those corners back in here and finish this. All right, I'm gonna come up from the top. If I'm in your way, let me know. Yeah, a little bit, but. Okay, well then move, because I can't. Come down from the top. Okay, remember, you go home practices? Do I? Yeah. Yeah, didn't you see my work in the corner? That's why I'm asking if you went home and practiced. Boy, this stuff is so fragile.
Are you in tight on these? Yep. Good. It's fragile, but at the same time, it's easy to work because you'll notice I was able to go right in there like that and then just pull the chisel this way and it just pulls the fibers over. Can't do that really with maple. Okay, this one. You want to get on the other side or you want to just do that sure. from a different angle? Yeah. How's our time, Jake? I gotta get faster at this. Too much there to set it right in the marking gauge line right off the bat. Okay, let's check those back walls. Excuse me. Change this from the last time we were here. So Gwen set that. Right where the marking gauge would have line would have been. Double check it. Okay. Make sure I'm not being held up by anything out here. Okay, that looks good. Now, okay. come in. Want to come over here for right over the left side. Now, I want you to come in right over here. I want you to point. I want them. I want them to see this. See that little. Get the light on it so you can see it. That little strip right there. That's often what is sloped, whereas the rest of the joint, the rest of the back wall isn't. And you put the joint together and it spreads because of that. So you always got to come in and pay real close attention to those little bits because they'll make or sometimes break the joint. So as a last thing you do before you leave the joint, there's one over there too. Let's double check. Make sure we don't have any little bit of ridge left on that one. None there. Oh yeah, there is. Oftentimes you can't see it, but you can feel it with the chisel. So you've got to come in and do both those tests. And as finicky and pick picky as this seems. It's so much better to make those little checks than it is to put all that time into making a piece, go to assemble the joint, it won't close properly, you end up with a gap between the end of your dovetail and the end lap when it could have been avoided. Final check to make sure those corners are clean. Okay, that's done. All right, so quick little, we've got uh, all the half lines are all cut. Everything is ready. Our next move is to cut the groove. And I don't want to use this drawer bottom plane as is. We, have I got five minutes, Jake? Exactly. Okay, come on over here for a this is this is the one that I couldn't sell because it ended up when we made it, it end up with this knot back here. But this piece right here, before and behind the blade, determine the depth of the cut. As you go through and start making making the cut, this will eventually bottom out. Or when you've cut deep enough, this will eventually bottom out and won't allow the blade to cut anymore. 
Did I just lie to you? I did. This is actually what controls it, the surface right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to take about this much material off of that. And that will give me a narrower or a shallower cut. Now let's just look and see. I'm going to want a little more than that. I only want to go about two thirds. So I want my groove to be about two thirds, one third, sorry, one third the depth or one third the thickness of this side. There's not going to be enough expansion in that piece of solid pine on the bottom or top to where it's going to shrink out of the groove. So I don't need that much depth. And I want a fair bit of strength. So if I were to take the groove too deep, if I were to go halfway, oh, it's just too fragile up here in the top. So I'm only going to go about a third of the way. So that means I need to remove, take that iron out of there. I need to uh, take that right about there. So I'm going to do that with my block plane. See if I can somehow set up the shooting board to support it. No, that's not going to work. Let's see how we can figure this out. I just wanted that to work. Maybe I can do it right here on the bench instead. You can make your own one of these. In fact, I'll go through it maybe as a bonus session one day and how to make these little tour bottle planes. I find it very useful. I use them a lot. Um, bench dog. Fairly aggressive cut. Now, in order to make sure that I don't end up tapering this, I want a complete cut, meaning I want to make a full length shaving. No stops and starts or breaks in the middle. Of course, in doing this, this drawer bottom plane will no longer be any good for anything other than making shallow grooves, but that's all right. That'll be its new designated job. Nice thing about this is it's all shop made, made out of maple, and you can have several of these, one cutter, and then you can have them for all different depths. doing this, make sure that you keep, I just did something I didn't want to do, which means I started, jumped, and then picked up again. So I'm going to come in here and make a pass, I'll try to catch up. The problem is I'm having to teeter, this plane is very little registration when I first make the cut, and that's what you have to be careful of. See what that looks like. Come on over here, Frick, and we'll, just so you can see. What I'm doing is I'm comparing this height to the uh, thickness of the board. And it's uh, just a little less than half, so I want to go a little bit more. But it's almost there. sure that that's the same and it isn't. I'm going to use my more light on this. All right. Of course I never pick up the side that I, it's easiest to read. That is just shy of 3 16 on this end. Yeah, maybe just a pass or two more. 
I'm still a little bit shy back here, or a little bit proud, so I'm just going to go this far, and then a complete pass. And I think that'll do it. Okay, blade's already been sharpened. Set that in place. Put the wedge in. Keep the blade back. So, oh my god, I'm going to have to go in there and modify. Let me show you what's the matter. I didn't count on this. When I put the blade in, the wedge sticks out. It's too long, so I've got to go in there and shorten it. I can do that with the plane and the shooting board. Advantage or disadvantage of shooting these things live? I come up with problems that I didn't anticipate, but you know, anytime you build a piece of furniture, especially with hand tools, you're going to end up in those situations. So. I guess we just learn to deal with it. Okay, now let's see where that is. This wedge, by the way, is shaped so that when the shaving comes up, are you in tight here, Frick? Yeah. When the shaving comes up, it hits this and goes off to the side and doesn't jam in the throat. sighting down that sole and it's out of the way but I need a little relief on the back side I had one there before but we eroded most of it so we'll just go back in and make it a little more pronounced okay so that's what we did so that it's not sticking out on the side closest to the fence all right with the blade set back in I'm gonna grab a little brass hammer Tap the wedge, and then bring the blade forward. And I'm sighting down the sole. Frick, why don't you come over here and get over my right shoulder? I'm gonna wrap it up. Are we got almost on time? Well, we're three minutes over. Okay. Well, here, let's just do this real quick. Can you come over this shoulder? Yep. I want you to sight right down, right down this line. So, and I'll show you where I want this. Where are we? We're gonna buy a new lamp. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, that looks good. Now, can you go right down there so that they can see the projection of that blade? Uh, here, wait a minute. This way, like that. Try to get the focus on That's good. It. You get it? Just barely. This is too close for comfort, you know. <laughs> Just All right. barely. All right, so next episode. Sorry, I wanted to get a little bit farther, but... We didn't, I didn't anticipate that, but at least you now know how to deal with it. So next episode, we're going to come in, we're going to get those grooves cut, we're going to get worked on the working on the bottom, and maybe we'll get it assembled in. See you soon.